Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sergei, and today I'm going to talk about deploying a Rails application with Nginx Sidecar container. So uh, presentation will be in English. Um, I have been with, working with SoftSurf and on SoftSurf um, for more than nine years. Um, right now, I'm associate applications architect, and I'm really passionate about the uh, Rails. Uh, but I always uh, thinking about uh, the DevOps path and this is what drives me um, a lot and I'm excited about the cloud um, services and uh, different cloud pro providers so for example previously I was talking about uh, lambda functions on Azure service and today I would like to share my experience using the um, uh, Amazon Elastic Container service um, on AWS. Right so we're going to talk about uh, different things but let's first start with agenda. Uh, so first of all, we're going to uh, take a look at deployment idea. Um, we're going to uh, see what solutions are there. We're going to talk uh, specifically about Amazon Elastic Container Service. Next, we are going to highlight uh, details about the Sidecar software architecture pattern, what it is and what it's supposed to do. Uh, then we'll have a live demo. And in the end, we're going to share some ideas and improvements of the um, presentation and demo. I'm going to share useful links and of course there will be a Q&A session. So let's get started. And uh, deployment idea. So you have been working hard on your idea implementation and now you think that this is a time when you first uh, think about deployment of your brand new Rails application. You want to show the world your shiny new website and there is a problem how to deploy your application uh, because uh, it should be fault tolerant it should be resilient and it should be done in a reliable way so there are some solutions already exist on the market and uh, to name those uh, there might be a solution as a pass platform heroku which is commonly used for rails and ruby applications uh, we can also take a look at the industry standard capistrano for deploying rails application uh, specifically on um, some cloud providers, or we can go even with a Debian packaging, or uh, maybe we can use the Amazon Elastic Container Service to, de to deploy our brand new application. And we're going to talk about this last option, Amazon Elastic Container Service. So uh, Amazon Elastic Container Service is a highly scalable and it is highly performance container orchestration service, and it supports Docker containers and it allows you to easily run and scale uh, containerization on AWS. Amazon Elastic Container Service also eliminates the need for you to install and operate your own uh, con container orchestration software and uh, it is scheduling the containers on virtual machines. But instead, um, or additionally, Amazon Elastic Container Service helps you to run microservice applications with native integration to AWS service, and it also enables the continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline. Uh, before we dive into the uh, Elastic Container Service uh, and going to switch to AWS console, uh, let's just briefly talk about uh, another thing in our presentation, uh, which uh, is the sidecar pattern. So sidecar pattern can be illustrated by this image. And as you might know, the sidecar pattern is the single node pattern and it's made up of two containers, application container and additional sidecar container. Um, application container contains the core logic of the application. Without this container, uh, it's uh, absolutely not possible to run application or application does not exist. In addition to application controller, the sidecar container uh, holds the role of the augment and approve the application container. Um, it always, uh, or might, okay, I can say that uh, sometimes uh, often application container might not know about the sidecar container and its influence. And in its simplest form, uh, the sidecar container can be used to add functionality to a container that might be otherwise difficult to improve. And um, sidecar container also uh, coexist and co-schedule on the same machine. Uh, we're um, using the atomic container group, such as, as you might know, 
uh, pod API object in Kubernetes. In addition to being scheduled on the same machine, the application container and site container share the same resources, and it might be uh, disk or hostname network and many other namespace. Basically, there are magnitude of problems which sidecar pattern can be used for. And the first one, the simplest one actually, is might be to add an HTTPS to a legacy service. Uh, so consider, for example, a legacy web service uh, that we have here, and it's used the HTTP protocol. Uh, years ago, when it was built, internal network security was not a high priority for a company, and therefore the application only service request over um, unencrypted HTTP protocol. Due to recent security glitches, the company has demanded the use of HTTPS protocol for all company websites. Here, the application of the sidecar pattern for legacy service situation is straightforward because the legacy web service is configured to serve exclusively, exclusively um, HTTP traffic uh, from the local host. And it means that its service is shared on the local network with the server being able to access only local services. At the same time, uh, we can um, deploy uh, another container or deploy Nginx service on, the, on that container that will serve the HTTP tra HTTPS traffic. And uh, it can serve it on the external IP address on the pod and proxy that traffic to the legacy web application sitting on the local host. Uh, likewise, by using the sidecar button, you can improve um, the legacy application uh, without uh, figuring or even touching the whole legacy application. And you don't need to think about rebuilding whole legacy application logic from the scratch to be able to support HTTP traffic with just addition of the uh, sidecar pattern uh, or container to that application. So um, summing up, sidecar pattern or container um, that using the sidecar pattern just augment or add enhance the logic of the main application container. Uh, another possible thing um, when we can apply the sidecar pattern is dynamic configuration. So uh, dynamic configuration with sidecars, uh, because Previously, simply proxying the traffic into existing application is not the only purpose of a sidecar pattern. Um, this is another common example, and uh, many applications use configuration files to allow parameterization of the application. So for example, we have some shared file system and there is a config file. Uh, this might be a raw text file or something more structured, for example, um, XML, JSON, or YAML file. Many pre-existing applications were written to assume that uh, this uh, file was present on the file system and read the configuration from there. It was absolutely possible and everything is okay with that. However, in the cloud uh, native environment, it's often quite useful to use the API for updating the configuration. And this allows you to dynamically push the configuration information via API um, instead of manual logging uh, onto the server and updating configuration file with uh, our imperative commands, right? All right, <laughs> so that was a lot of talking. And without further ado, I would like to uh, switch to the demo. And first of all, let's have a look at our Rails application, uh, which we're going to put in our docking container. And then we're going to push this docking container to uh, Amazon Elastic Container Registry, and then we'll use it in the Amazon Elastic Container Service. Um, so uh, let's switch to the console. Um, yeah, so just uh, some preliminary information. So I have uh, Ruby on my machine, Ruby 263, and uh, according corresponding Rails version. So you might uh, say that I'm a big fan of Rails, and indeed, um, I'm coming from the um, Rails stack, I would say. So um, let's have take a look at our at our uh, application. Let's check if all the dependencies are there, and let's uh, try to um, run our application to see what we have and what we're going to deploy. So uh, our application is up and running on port 8080. Uh, let's uh, switch to the browser and let's navigate to 
port 8080, right? So we have uh, Instagram killer application here and let's try to um, sign up. Um, Sergey and email, it will be um, demo example.com. Um, actually, and right, let's sign up. Right, so we on on the main page of application. It is look fine and dandy. We already have some previous posts uh, in our application, so um, we have also um, some uh, parameterization of our user profile, and we can change the password or we can edit the profile. So let's uh, add uh, or update uh, my name and example.com and update. So everything is updated here and we can navigate here and we can also uh, log out from our application and see the main uh, landing page for login. Right, so that is our application uh, running locally. But uh, we would like to make a container from that. So let's uh, stop the application and let's uh, try to create a Docker uh, file that is going to be used later on. So I'm going to type, uh, I'm trying to type really quickly, but uh, please bear with me. Uh, it will be the most typing uh, here and everything else will be um, like uh, less, less typing in the application and in the demo. So uh, I'm going to use the uh, Rails Alpine version and I'm going to run uh, APK because uh, on Alpine it's only APK um, um, package manager uh, available. And this is great because it makes our image uh, more shrinked and less of size. So uh, G++ and I would need probably muscle, uh, I'm sorry. Muscle dev, uh, mask, muscle dev, and uh, of course GCC, uh, libc dev, uh, also file, um, git. Um, I'm using in my application SQLite 3. Might be not a good uh, choice for production, but just for simplicity reason, I believe that it will fit our purpose. So let's add the uh, library to build uh, support for SQLite. No GS uh, to uh, pre-compile our asset pipeline and um, also zip data. So um, we need to have the application name. For, like it's, it's always good to create some envir er, um, environment variable for our application. So let's uh, call it the application name and um, it will be a Rails application. Also, I'm going to create a directory. Um, uh, which will be war dub 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 and rails actually let's copy it from here to save some time and work directory will be again uh, this guy so um, next let's copy copy our game file with dependencies um, game file and game file lock these are used to lock the dependencies for our application and it's vital to have it in application so that bundle will know what dependencies to download. Uh, it's like uh, pipe env uh, or python env uh, text file with uh, requirements and dependencies. Um, all right, so bundle install. We're going to copy everything that we have uh, from our uh, uh, to the decorized uh, image and we're going to create another volume uh, which will be shared then with um, Nginx uh, container, sidecar container. Another volume for uh, Nginx uh, to store the configuration. And let's uh, shrink our image by deleting not needed after we install all the dependencies um, packages that we installed previously um, by run uh, 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 at update. So, uh, so we're going to delete uh, make and of course GCC and muscle dev is not really needed. Um, GCC, 
also libc because it's not needed it for runtime here and file and git because we're we're going to download uh, all the dependencies and then they will reside inside the container so uh Almost finished. Um, now we need to expose, as always, our port 8080 and um, change the mode. Uh, change the mode for our uh, script because here I'm going to use uh, uh, upstart script. It will be actually a shell script that will help me to uh, um, create the asset pipeline and run the application. And I'm going to define it as the entry point uh, to our application, so that will be a shell script, and it will use the upstart shell script. And yeah, I believe that this is pretty much it. Uh, so I believe that we are fine. Uh, let's, um, yeah, so uh, one one more thing is, again, you have noticed that I use Alpine, not, for example, not Debian, because um, the size of the image in Alpine will be less, uh, uh, lesser than in Debian. Um, it's uh, around like 500 megabytes less. Um, right, and I have been also uh, talking about the starting script, upstart shell script. So let's create one already. And uh, here I'm going to use the BNSH and I'm going to, uh, as I do, done previously uh, in the application, I use bundle install here, and then I use bundle exec with Puma configuration. So basically, um, I'm going to use uh, the same command in the starting shell script. So, but first of all, let's um, do, do bundle exec rate uh, and assets uh, precompile to, to compile our assets pipeline. And the next command, uh, it will be bundle exec puma minus c and uh, provided the configuration file uh, config puma rb. Um, let's take a look at that file. So here is my application um, thing. And here is our Docker file created right now. And upstart is using config puma. So config uh, puma rb, as you can see, our application is going to reside on the port 8080. Um, and uh, basically we can uh, change it to production. And I believe that this is pretty much it. Now uh, let's, uh, let's create our, uh, let's build our uh, Docker con container. So uh, this will be, um, I think it will be better to name it as a Rails application. And right, let's start. So it will, um, okay, so something is wrong. Let's figure out what's what's there. Um, oh, I have a typo. Update. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, correct this out. Possible. Sometimes uh, um, typos are possible. So make GC muscle um, bit. Okay, application name is Rails application and working there, copy, bundle install, all right. Okay, let's try it out. Right, it's installing dependencies. Let's just make sure that we are okay because uh, then it will take some time um, to build the uh, Docker image and not to lose uh, our time, we're going to switch to AWS and try to create repositories for our containers. Oh, something else. Um, Oh, yeah, that's a totally valid uh, thing. So I need here to put correctly. Um, it will be faster because already uh, the lower layers with dependencies were already uh, built. So we just reuse them. And we right now executing the bundle uh, install. 
So I believe at this point, we're going to check the progress uh, from time to time. But at this point, let's switch to um, AWS console. And from here, I'm going to type Elastic Container Service. And I'm going to go to Amazon Elastic Container Registry to create repositories. So let's create one for our uh, application, Rails application. And it will be Rails, um, actually, let's do it application. And uh, we're going to disable the tag immutable and we are not going to scan on push uh, to save some time. So let's create one. And on the same uh, site, let's create another one for our Nginx. So this will be a repository where our Nginx sidecar uh, container uh, will reside. So for that, let's uh, give it a reasonable name and I'm going to this name, uh, Rails uh, underscore application hyphen Nginx. Uh, the same configuration are here preserved. And as you can see, here is our um, repository for our Rails application Docker file. And let's view the view push commands. So uh, as uh, here, a wizard suggests us we need to first uh, get the login for our um, uh, region. And as you can see, I have uh, taken Frankfurt as the closest region to us. Um, it's also worth mentioning that if you're not sure about the um, name of your uh, geographical zone, uh, then you can. Uh, consider to check this uh, this manual or this documentation from AWS and for Frank Frankfurt it has this geographical zone which is U central one uh, right so basically uh, let's try to log in um, I believe that uh, the main hustle here is to actually install the AWS CLI because it requires but uh, previously it was not uh, like that but right now it requires specific um, Python version as well as a specific uh, pip uh, um, um, installation bundle or package um, so all this information can be found in the manual again from AWS installing AWS by CLI and also install I use installing AWS CLI manual for macOS because I'm running macOS on my machine. All right, so let's copy this guy, go to the console. Okay, so. Right, so login was successful. Um, I do use uh, the password in the configuration file, but for simplicity reason, it's okay for me. Um, and this step we already built already. So let's take a look how it's proceeding. Um, yeah, so basically it was already successful. Let's check the images. And as you can see, we have this Rails application, which uh, has a reasonable size, by the way. And uh, right, so the next step suggests to tag this, uh, uh, this Docker image as the latest one. So let's do it. And again, let's check the images. Um, something here. And Docker images, all right, so probably it's a little bit bigger, so let's make it smaller. Please let me know if the size of my terminal is OK for you. So as you can see, uh, it was stacked successfully. And the last step is to run the following command to push the image to your newly created AWS repository. So let's do it. It's fairly simple. And it will take some time to push it, but it will be faster than uh, building the whole Debian package. Um, uh, while it's doing its thing, let's switch to another repository, which is Rails application Nginx. And um, yeah, so uh, to save some time for presentation, I have already created off screen uh, a separate um, application for my Nginx repo. So it is here, Rails application Nginx. Let's take a look at its structure. So uh, we have a root Docker file, which is pretty straightforward. So it is like, like uh, taken from the documentation from Nginx. Uh, here it has uh, built from, I believe, Debian uh, base image, baseline image. So we have an access to aptitude get and we install all the requirements and then we copy uh, Nginx application 
to etc nginx conf d default configuration and also uh, get the same shared volume as we had for our application uh, rails application uh, all right so uh, here is our main nginx file again nothing fancy uh, one thing to note is that we uh, are logging our access log uh, to this particular directory that is like by default provided for us and then we have in uh, this include that actually specify our main configuration and let's take a look at application uh, file. So the Nginx application um, or web uh, proxy, uh, as you will, uh, will sit on the port 80. And then we have a health check. And when we have, uh, it will actually proxy the traffic to our Rails application that sits on the local host. Uh, so it's not uh, visible or, or uh, accessible from the outside sitting on the port 8080. So that's the main thing here. And uh, yeah, so basically uh, we have some view push commands here. We already get the login previously. Let's build our um, Docker image for Nginx with this command. So it will be fast enough. Uh, on meanwhile, our Docker image with application was already pushed to our uh, uh, repository. So let's check it out. Okay, so it's not it, this one. As you can see, it was marked as latest and it has digest and reasonable size. It has no scan status because we disabled it from the beginning and his, of course, has no libitus because there was no scanning procedure. Uh, if I'm going to push another one, this will be untagged um, and another one, the most recent one will be tucked as latest and so on and so forth and that why we can keep our application or you can say deployment uh, fresh and um, dandy uh, from the outside for outside world right and let's see all right so we already have the uh, nginx um, so let's push it what are the comments we can always uh, take a look at the wizard so let's tuck it Let's check if it was successful. Yes, it was successful. And the last comment is to push our tagged image to the Elastic Container Registry, and ju just to check if everything goes well and smoothly. And I believe that everything is okay. Okay, I'm sorry. And this is it. And it already uh, shown here. Right, so once Nginx and Rails application Docker uh, images are here and they are pushed to container registry, uh, we can go and set the task definition for our Elastic Container service. Uh, so let's take a look. <clears throat> the, uh, so let's create a new task definition. Uh, we have already one created, uh, I believe it was uh, created by me previously. Um, I believe that we can um, make it inactive or create another revision. So, um, okay, let, let's just create uh, another task from the scratch. And uh, yeah, the first thing that uh, when you would like to create a new task definition for our future um, cluster is a choice between Fargate and EC2. So Fargate is more lightweighted, but uh, it is AWS managed and it has no SSH access. And I would like to have an SSH access to my uh, deployed container. So I will go with EC2 uh, service. And next step. And uh, there is uh, a quite a, a few fields that we are going to fill, but bear with me, it will be fast. So task definition will be Rails application um, for Dima, and it requires capability from EC2 service. I'm not going to add any task role, and I'm going to use network default mode host so that Nginx sidecar and main application can communicate with each other. And next one, I'm going to... Uh, go to containers and I'm going to add these two containers uh, to this um, definition. So the container name will be actually, let's take it uh, from our repositories. 
So the first one will be Rails application and the image. Um, the image file is uh, um, uh, that file that was pushed to the container registry. So uh, we can take it from here or we can take it also from our Docker images, whatever uh, suits you best. Uh, just don't forget to get the latest stack, but we're going to take it from here. And we're going to push it here and verify everything is okay, it's accepted. And I would like to uh, provide some hard and soft limits. Um, so the hard limit for application uh, container will be, uh, a little bit bigger than for Nginx sidecar container and soft limits, at least we have this number of uh, uh, soft limit uh, always reserved for our container and port mapping, our application will be run on port 8080. There's no need to add another port mappings, but if you would like, then if you expose multiple services, then it's a choice for you. Um, health check is, I believe it's fine. Um, we have also environments and let's reserve some CPU units for us, for our application container. I will go with this number, uh, suggested pretty reasonable essentials and entry point. As you might remember, uh, we had this entry point as uh, a shell script and upstart. And actually we're going to reuse it here. So everything is, as you can see, straightforward. So we, we use shell script and our upstart script for starting the application and working directory. Again, I'm going to copy it from here as, as it was stated in the Docker file. So working directory is this guy, right? I paste it here. So content timeouts, network settings, uh, everything is fine here. One thing that I would like to go and actually to create a storage um, and mount point for us. Uh, so um, that will be um, this guy, I believe. So the mount point and this command is here, Street, that is fine. And so we don't need this guy. Um, I'm sure why, but this mount point is not reside correctly. Hmm. Maybe it will be um, configured later on. Um, I believe that, yeah, I believe it's fine that we have this REST application stated here. And um, I believe that uh, privilege, it's not, uh, let's leave the security and resource limits as this, Docker labels for some reason, let's not add anyone. And yes, so here you, you can see this container was added. Let's quickly add the same for Nginx. So we have Nginx and we have repository for Nginx and here is our image. Let's uh, do this. It's uh, fine and again dandy. A heart limit will be a little bit less and here it will be suggested one. Uh, port mapping, yes, our Nginx container is reside on port 80. Um, so CPU limits, let's check. Um, CPU limits, again, it's a little bit um, smaller, uh, almost twice smaller. And yes, so to start Nginx, we're going to start it uh, as usual uh, with no, gym, no daemon command. So um, off command. And we can of course use the same command to start our Rails, applica uh, Rails application, but since we are using more than one command. It will. It is easier to get this upstart and put all the commands here, right? So, um, I believe that it's okay. Ten amounts. Let's leave it as it is. Here, um, the mount point. Okay. Let's let's uh, give it var dot dot dot, and this will be Rails application. Still, I'm not sure why it's not recognized the mount point uh, from their Nginx, but maybe for the good reason. Um, right. 
So that will be it for, yes, so that will be it. So we have this task definition. And yeah, so um, maybe the biggest takeaway here is the port assignment. So Nginx is sitting on port 80 and Arrays application on 8080. And uh, yeah, so with this script, uh, we have Rails application that will be started by our um, shell script, start shell script, and Nginx by a normal command uh, with no daemon, I think. So it will be there sitting all the time. And, and the uh, container will not shut down. Um, right, so I believe that this is pretty much it. So task definition was created successfully and it is active. Final step here uh, in Elastic Container Service is to create a cluster. I'm sorry, uh, that was, mm, so here, a cluster not from, uh, not from here, but actually from Elastic Container Service. So we're going to create a cluster. And again, um, choices are networking only, uh, EC2 for Windows and EC2 Linux plus networking. And I'm going to take, uh, go in with this choice because I'm going to run the Linux distro. And uh, the next uh, item is uh, just to name the cluster and provisioning is uh, on demand. I don't buy any spot instances. Um, well, for EC2 type instance, I'm going to go with some less intensive because it's like too, too large. Uh, I will go with uh, probably T2 medium and uh, this will be unchecked. Uh, number of instances one, I'm okay to have one instance of that and the port uh, nodes will run on this instance and that is actually the idea of the site car because it shares the uh, virtual machine on where it, or compute um, engine where it's running. So it should reside on one machine. If I would like to uh, scale my cluster later, I can add more instances, um, okay. So key pairs, uh, yeah, so I'm going to create new uh, virtual private cloud for me and, uh, or I can use a uh, already existing one. So this will, uh, this is a key point here in creating a cluster because this is how, um, uh, how load balancer will be attached to that networking of our cluster. And, or, or we can reuse uh, another one so it's like, Maybe if just for simplicity reason, we can reuse uh, this one. And subnet, um, I'm going to go with um, central AI um, 1A uh, availability zone. So this is also crucial. Security group, I'm not going, to, actually, I'm going to reuse uh, one created. Uh, I can, um, oh, let's, let's create a new one, actually. Uh, so we are stating that uh, by serial block, block, we are exposing to ourselves to the uh, open uh, internet uh, and port that is exposed is AAT. Uh, I have already uh, created my instance role to, for container uh, instance to manage uh, API. And if you don't have this one, you should uh, create one with uh, EC, uh, role that has an um, access to the API uh, from the identity access management. And I believe that this is pretty much it. So let's create one. Uh, it will take some time to provision the cluster and actually it uh, using the cloud formation stack to up uh, our containers. So if I go, for example, to management console and go to EC2, uh, you will see something already happening. I still, okay, I'm in Frankfurt. Yes, so there will be a launching of new instances. Right now there is none, but bear with me, there will be. And, okay, new cluster, so everything is provisioned. Cluster is active. And um, as you can see right now, we have no container instances reserved to this cluster. That is where we can go and assign our task definition to our cluster. So task definition will schedule number of containers here. We, actually, it will be one and run those Docker images from um, Amazon um, container registry by task. We can go with service, but service um, a little bit, um, it requires a little bit more to elaborate. We're going to go with tasks. And I'm going to run new task. 
And again, lunch time will be EC2. And this uh, is my task definition that I have, I have created. And cluster rails, number of tasks is one. And yes, so this is also um, uh, the placement template is uh, should be balance spread uh, for our cluster. And advanced options. So container. Okay, so I, I believe I believe that this is fine. And let's run the task. Well, the main thing that you would like to watch for is the status. So the last pending, uh, last status and desired status should be equal to running. That's where you're going to know that you're hopefully um, successfully deploy your um, cluster using task definitions. And at this point, I believe we need, uh, we're going to see some running instances is being provisioned for us. So as you can see, uh, T to medium uh, in our preferable availability zone 1A uh, is currently initializing and it's doing status check. Once two, status, two or three status checks are prepared, it will uh, claim it as it's ready. So let's just wait for that and we're going to watch for the statuses. If anything goes wrongly, we can always go to stop thing and check what is wrong there. Okay, what is wrong there? And actually we can also check the CloudWatch uh, logs for, um, for example, containers that were failed to run. But as you can see, we have a running instance. Well, uh, you might think, okay, so here is my running instance. How can I, uh, uh, how can I ac uh, access it? So we have Nginx, we have our application. Basically, uh, at this point, we already done with Elastic Container Server. So everything is great. And assuming uh, we have set up our load balancer and target groups and also added a new uh, EC, uh, ECS container and cluster to our target group and also our target group health check path correctly succeeded and we properly configured the security groups, then we can uh, access our application. So let's do that. Um, so I'm going to, again, switch to uh, EC2 and instead of going to dashboard, I'm going to go to load balancers. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to create new load balancer. Um, if I would like to go with application load balancer, so uh, basically every, uh, like most of the things will be flexibly configured by AWS, I would like to go with network load balancer. I know uh, what TCP port I would like to get. And uh, basically uh, virtual private cloud is already created. Um, so let's, let's do that. And I'm going to name this load balancer as Rails or uh, Rails application with, I'm sorry, with sidecar and it will be internet facing it is my intention i know that i'm going to load balance tcp port and port 80 uh, no other listeners now uh, so we have our user product cloud and as you recall previously i have specifically chosen that my cluster will be sitting on this availability zone i have this uh, subnet already assigned and let's uh, let's leave uh, AWS to assign, uh, automatically assign the IP address. I don't need to assign it. Uh, maybe you would like also to have some DNS records and probably give it a shiny name that will uh, really look great from the internet. I will go with defaults. And um, to configure, um, all right, um, I mean, I think that, Uh, that was uh, uh, underscore that was uh, stopping me from creating this load balancer. Um, you're still with me, right? So I assume so. Um, configure uh, security groups. Let's uh, go next. And um, so I'm going to get this uh, existing target group and everything is okay. Health check was going to be provided by TCP. Advanced health check. No, I don't need. And uh, right, so that's fine. And let's review that facing. Yes, so three house check interval, right? So routing, all right. It 
was successful career. It was pretty fast. Um, right. So DNS record that's facing the internet. Uh, let's. Um, so, and it's a created. Yeah, so basically let's copy this guy and let's see what we got. Nothing. All right. So let's see one more time. Uh, so we have this running load balancer to Rails. Uh, here. Okay, so state is pro okay. So it's still provisioning. Uh, we need to uh, wait. It was quite fast, but it was created a record and it's still provisioning. So let's uh, try to update it. I believe it will be soon ready. So it's still provisioning. Um, everything here is running fine, and the cluster. Oh, it's it's even has already some memory utilization, so we know that it's running well even by these numbers. So task is running, right? Um, this is okay. What about our active? All right, still nothing. Something is still not ready. Uh, type is network. Um, it might be that the thing that I was uh, previously confused by the thing that what, what was, it has no mounting point. Um, uh, it's, it's actually correct. It's actually correct. Um, right. You know what? Uh, we have this task definition. Um, basically, uh, previously I have created for a demo purpose uh, sidecar nginx uh, task definition that I was using for uh, checking purposes. Uh, let's actually try to. Uh, recreate the cluster. So here, this is how I'm deleting the cluster. And uh, probably we can uh, use that task, which is actually the same, it's absolutely identical um, to my task definition, um, with one exception that the mounting point there was correctly set. I don't know why it's not set correctly here. Um, but it will use the same actually uh, containers that we pushed uh, right now with you. So right while it's doing its uh, work, since we already um, finished our demo application with Elastic Compute, uh, I'm sorry, Elastic Container Service. And uh, we'll need to just perform the last th step to see our application from the internet. Um, so maybe you have any questions and I will be more than happy to answer them while it's doing its job. So I'm going to go back to my presentation. So that was a demo. Yeah, um, this is a CLI installation uh, instructions that you might encounter while you try to configure this CLI. And well, ideas and improvements. Um, the next idea will be probably to try also GCP Cloud Run, uh, which is, was uh, recently uh, go out from bet, I believe, and it's uh, publicly available. Um, also try to uh, replicate load balancer service using um, Kubernetes. Um, as you might uh, remember, um, 
I have been using SQLite. So the next step will be to go from SQLite to PostgreSQL and also maybe to um, uh, go from PostgreSQL to Amazon RDS service so that we can fully manage our uh, persistent layer uh, on Amazon. And useful links. Um, Definitely deploying Nginx as a reverse proxy sidecar container on Amazon EC ECS. Uh, so this is definitely a great reference. Um, also, much of help will be designing distributed systems book by Brenton Burns, um, which is uh, gives a really extensive and exhaustive information about sidecar and not only sidecar uh, different patterns uh, for distributed systems. Also, there is a manual uh, installed AWS CLI on macOS and Docker basis for Amazon ECS and configuring the AWS CLI, which are um, namely here. And also, uh, I would uh, push my changes that I have for this application together with application for Nginx Sidecar to my GitHub account. Um, so you're welcome to check it out. And yes, so we are finally get to the Q&A session. I will check offline while I'm answering on the question uh, status for the cluster. <laughs>